I know exactly what you're thinking right now. Hey Tuki dudes, how do I become a leader of an African country? Simple, lead an army and be charismatic enough to get people on your side. Once you take over, just enact a bunch of weird laws and be as cruel as you can to the people who brought you there. Need an example? How about Francisco Ngema? During his regime, Equatorial Guinea was known as the Dachau of Africa. Ngema was only nine when he saw his father, a witch doctor, get punched to death and his mother commit suicide a week later. Ngema didn't really fuss about knowing stuff, he failed his civil service exam three times and his going through the ranks was slow paced. This is when Ngema started to dislike people who can talk about different topics and read books. In 1968 Equatorial Guinea was fully decolonized from the Spanish and Ngema won the only free election to take place in the country to this day. And it didn't take him long to start tearing the country up. In a parallel universe, Ngema was just a really friendly guy whose goodwill was misunderstood. He gave himself direct power in being a lawmaker and a judge so that his boys in the administration wouldn't have to work overtime. He morphed all political parties into one so that the people wouldn't get confused and changed the constitution to give himself absolute power and presidency for life. The referendum had an entirely possible and totally not rigged 99.9% .9 of votes in Ngema's favor. Ngema, being the friendly guy that he was, wanted to hang around with his pals, but wasn't really fun at parties. All his jokes were a bit Amy schumer -y, and he gave himself douchey titles like Unique Miracle and Grand Master of Education, Science and Culture. Not accepting the fact that people refused his friendship, Ngema mined the only road out of the country, destroyed all boats and banned fishing. He also banned private education, killed nerds with glasses and banned the use of the word intellectual. The official national motto was changed to There is no other god than Ngema. Around 100,000 people fled the country, which represented 47% of the population at the time. Add that to an estimated 50 to 80,000 deaths caused by Ngema, all that for a country of 215,000 people. If you look at the percentages, he did more damage to Guinea than the Nazis did to Europe. On Christmas Eve in 1975, 150 of his political opponents were invited to a football stadium. Soldiers who were dressed as Santa Claus came out and killed them all. Soon a lot of other things got banned too. Libraries, newspapers, churches, Christian names and oddly enough wearing shoes was illegal as well. 11 years into Ngema's rule a coup was organized and he was tried and sentenced to death 101 times. Which if you really think about it is 100 times more than needed. Guineans hired Moroccan soldiers to execute Ngema as they feared his supernatural powers. The leader of the coup, Teodoro Ngema, Francisco's nephew, took over and is their president to date with not a lot changing for the better. Be sure to like and share the video if you enjoyed it and don't forget to subscribe. See you next week!